Hey there everybody, nice to see you. It is Project 2, Episode 1, so we are starting from absolutely nothing. On the, uh, on the GitHub release, there's a v0.0 .0 for this project. Don't bother getting it, there's nothing in there. But I always release it somewhere so that at any time you can look at this is what was here. You could you could grab the zip file, the source code on zip them. You could do a uh, win merge on them and go. This is all that happened. Of course, all that happened is I made some actual code, but that's just what I do. We similarly have a completely blank Trello board. We don't know what we're going to do yet. We we have I have some vague notion, of course, but we're gonna we're gonna be filling that in in, in a moment. But let's take a look at what we're tackling, and um, it is not yet February, so we do not yet know the theme word of the month for one game a month, but that's okay, because we have uh, a bunch of work that we need to do in order to do anything at all in, in, our, in our target, uh, in our... Um, yeah, in our in our in what we're in our target API, and that target API is SDL, which stands for Simple Direct Media Layer, and it's actually uh, relatively old. SDL years, ten years, more than ten years ago, I wrote a book on using SDL 1.2 for game development, and since then there has been SDL 2. I've checked it out; it is not that altogether different from SDL 1.2. But that's what we're going to use. The problem being, it is um, written in C. Written in C means it's got native code, and we're in F sharp land, and and more importantly, the .NET um, the .NET area. And so, when in order to we can use native code, but in order to do that, we have to p invoke. There are some there are some bindings available, including one that is written in C sharp. But um, while that's while that's all swell, and I may actually wind up referring to it from time to time, it and it it, does, it actually does have a very similar similar uh, syntax. That's not an F sharp binding. We want an F sharp binding. We want an F sharp wrapper around our binding because we're not going to use it as it's bound because it's it's written in written in C and it's an imperative language and we're going to make it more functional but it's going to be interesting so but the first thing first thing well first things first is we need Mr. New Project and we don't need any of that junk so Start ourselves off with a brand new join a function in project two workspace. Just like that, and we're going to have uh, it's a cleverly cleverly named project two because we don't really know what we're going to do to it yet. So we'll do a console app. Although not really, because we here we have a boilerplate. Make our boilerplate our boilerplate, and I don't want it a Windows application. And now it's not a Windows. Now it's not a console application any longer. And we're ready to do some something. But, in order to do that, we need to learn, but we're going to first need to download our bindings, and I happen to need the X64 bindings, your mileage may vary, copy you, And take you on over to where we need to go. Oh, not episode one. Workspace. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to extract it. Just extract. 
extract it here. All right, and well, here's here's the readme for SDL. Here's the blah blah blah. blah, blah. This is SDL. Please distribute this file file with the SDL runtime environment. So cool. We'll do that. I don't need my zip file anymore. And we'll move you up one more. We will also add you to my project. Add. And you are content. When we copy, you are content. And we copy. So, there we are. We got a readme that says, hey, please distribute me. We're being nice and doing what we're supposed to do. It tells you spiffy information about SDL2. So now SDL2 is in our project. We have to uh, take a look at the various portions of SDL and what we have to do. Fortunately, there is there's this there's a good wiki that has um, different sections as well as links to the header source that we need. And more or less, let's go here. And okay. So and so we it is organized into various subsystems. And so what we want to do is um make ourselves a you know belt list so porting well not porting wrapping SDL two. And in wrapping SDL two there are some of these we need and some of these we don't really need to get our job done and my goal here is not to make a complete wrapper for SDL2 it that's a that's a nice goal but it's incredibly uninteresting and I would wind up uh, ex expending effort on things that I do not need but what we do need the things we do need are Initialization, initialization, and how about I copy it? Copy. Initialization and shutdown. I don't need configuration variables. I need error handling. Um, I, I may need log handling. Well, we'll put down the ones I think I might need. I'm not going to go with assertion querying SDL version because that's actually one of the first things I'm going to do. And we're going to we'll take it take it down to so display and window management and a 2D accelerated and Rendering pixel formats and conversion routines, rectangle functions, surface creation, and simple drawing, platform specific window management. Clipboard, clipboard handle. I don't know. If I want clipboard handling. You know what? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Because worst case scenario, if I want to get text into something, I want to be able to paste it. That is what I want. Because that was one of the one of the chief things for SDL is, hey, the mono game text input sucks. In SDL, if all I've got is the ability to paste clipboard, that is still better. 
We definitely need keyboard handling. Event, wait, we have event handling. Keyboard support, we want that. Uh, mouse support, probably. Joystick support, not so much, but definitely game controller support. The joystick support would, would be for older style things, I think. I'm not too worried about force feedback. Uh, we do have to have the basis of <coughs> audio device management. Playing and recording. There's actually another... Uh, library that helps with these things. It is called SDL Mixer that we will bring in when it comes time for that, but I do need bare minimums of here is how to do it. Um, that's audio. Thread management. I don't need to get to timer management. Timer support. Go with, go with timer support. At least... Um, I don't know necessarily that I, I may I may wish to wrap some of those functions in order to tell what time it is and then file abstraction maybe maybe not but this is this is a good it's a good set of things for now all right let's get you up oh, that's right grab the grab the tab no well, maybe not grab the tab put you back there you go so that's a lot of stuff, and hey, while we're at it, let's let's do our labels. I know exactly how I want to do this. I mostly how I want to do this. I'm uncertain. this I may not want to do this I got squee uh, I forget what I had blue for but I don't I didn't know I had I do not want to do this I don't think I had. I don't think I had blue. Well, that's fun. Okay, there's an artifact on the screen for a minute. So, all right, we're gonna go at first with. We do know. I mostly know how I want to do this. I've, I've done a little bit of practice with invoking not too much so that if I if I flare all around a bit um, yeah, so the first two we're going to do uh, initialization shutdown and clearing the SDL version because I happen to know that if you call the initialization function if you don't call the initialization function you will not get something out for your version it also gives us a little bit of practice on mapping a structure to a to a to a native struct. So mapping a, mapping a thing in F sharp into a struct and getting some information out with it. So, without further ado, let's take a look here at the kinds of things that we're going to need to do. And one of one of the one of the things that we're going to look at is here's an external function, and here's <laughs> it is the the MSDN example is here. If you have a void thing that takes a void, here's how here's how you make it. You make a module, a little a little module, a little private module doesn't have to be private, but a module inside where say, hey, here's a module, and put these things here. 
DLL import and interop services are the magical glue where uh, this, is, this is how this gets done. So, well, we're gonna we're gonna believe MSDN, and we're going to at least for the moment we will comment this out and go. That is how we want to do that. And at the moment we're just gonna be in in program.fs because that's that's what we want to do. And we're going to start to look at the initialization and shutdown functions. Um, the cornerstone of all things are SDL init and SDL quit. SDL init takes an int, or it takes a uint32, returns an int, returns a zero on success or an, or an error code. And then you have to call SDL get error. We may also decide that we, at the very least, need SDL get error. So let's go back to Trello. And we're probably going to want that. These are small enough, and this is, if we got this going, then we got, we got something significant accomplished today. We won't see anything other than here here's a textual representation of the version. Oh and since we're since we're there, let's leave this as a console app until we can actually see something. Alright. We call it module SDL init native equals and then if we are to be believed or if, if MSDN is to be believed, we're going to go with uh, SDL2, DLL, calling function is, is cdecl, and the function is int unit32, so there's that, I should actually be able to paste that and see what it hates about it. Doesn't like uint32. Core.uint32. It just wants a small u. So it likes that. Seems to be okay with that. Let's get over to SDL quit. It is void SDL quit void. Grab U2, get another one. Doesn't know what a void is until I put extern on it. Does it <coughs> doesn't care about that. It's totally cool with the unit. And so thing is, is alright. There's not really a something that it produces other than a result, and this, this it really just does some nothing. And I don't much care for it. So, but it's that's okay. And under category init, the uh, go back one. So we have all these constants here. These are our It everything. And they're just UN32s. <clears throat> and we could go ahead and define these if we if we want to and well, really at the moment let's do that. Doesn't have to be in the module because these are just numbers. Oh good, I really like this. Importing code, this is a, if you work on .NET code for long enough, what happens is you will have to work with a native library. Or, um, really what you're doing is you're taking, 
you're taking a native library and you're putting a dot net you have to you have to make the dot net equivalent to it and um, so you wind up still having to work with whatever the stuff was hanging out before that invariably this will happen in the course of using dot and one of the, one of the reasons that uh, moving to dotnet is so attractive is that you can do exactly this but that doesn't mean that uh, that doesn't mean that it's fun necessarily and I know I'm being I'm being non-idiomatic here in this making a macro well first off using using um, I guess I don't really need that. We're porting over comments too, because if you're going to port them, port the comments. You know what? Compatibility of this flag is ignored means we're not going to put it. Goals. And these are bitwise ors. Which means we need three pipes because that's what we need. Because the pipe is so rather or rather given different uses in uh, in the F sharp now we idiomatize our stuff otherwise I'll have the F the F sharp ivory tower police at my door saying hey not being idiom idiomatic enough. Quit teaching them things to not be idiomatic. So there, it aligns vertically so that it's nice and pretty. And now we have so now let's we're going to init SDL init native SDL init SDL init video SDL init comes with three. Up these then have to be unit three twos. Which I probably want to do like so, right? See, and this is why I don't like. Okay, fine. Okay. Whoop. Let's make it better. Uh, that should automatically you in thirty two it when it's when it's oring it together. Will that do that? Typing it is not typing it this way is not necessarily the way you want to go, but I just came with the realization that the way I want to do it.
now it's unit 32, now those are unit 32s, and now it's just a, hey, it should be unit, but it's an int. Um, let unit result equal that. We're going to print fun. We'll just print fun. Init result equals. That's just an int. Yeah. Int percent i. Percent i. And then we're immediately going to go to SDL quit. Sorry, SDL init native. SDL quit. Um, while we're at it, we will system dot console read line read key. Been doing C sharp code all week, so expect semicolons to happen. Ig ignorio, ignore. So we're going to read a key, we're going to ignore it, then we're going to quit, and then we shall return. Now, of course, SDL, like any, like any native sort of library, this is SDL2. This would fail horribly. Um, has a lot of imperative state with it, and we're just going to have to be okay with that. Well, the the whole system itself has imperative state that we deal with with SDL and it, and that's just the nature of how things are. So let's find out if it gives us an error or not, shall we? And bad image exception was unhandled. And what did I do wrong? So, and this is the fun part. 32 and that number. What have I done? 32 flags. Right. Made a little program with an incorrect format. You know what? I know the I know the answer to this. I think I know the answer to this. The answer is I want um want X sixty four. And that is what I want. Because I brought in these X sixty four. It result is zero, and we we'll wait for a key, and then we quit. So that was well, that was a tense moment, huh? Suppose I could have brought in the x86 stuff. That probably would have worked, but I'm going to work in x64. Screw you, 32-bit. <coughs> anyway, so we have. We have a knit and quit. There are subsystems and was a knit and these other things, but these are not super duper essential yet. We will probably put them in, but we will put them in as needed. We need SDL and it and we need SDL quit because those must be used. And the next thing that I wanted to do is um, SDL get version. So, here's SDL get version, and this is going to be interesting and fun. Because we need, um, and these, and we're going to actually make a different module for it. SDL version native. Turn that 
We're going to go from DLL import. And before too, too long, we're definitely going to be having... Um, we're going to be splitting this out, so there's going to be an SDL init F sharp file for for this, and we're also going to make a lot of this stuff private and then uh, put more uh, functional wrappers on it and that's how we're gonna do it but for now we just have a couple so we have SDL version and we are like what in the world is an SDL version so type SDL version goals struct and and we need to start doing some of this stuff. Struct, layout, and go to definition. No. Okay. Dot net struct layout. All right. Over time, it's a matter of familiarity. There are those parts that you know you need to use them. Struct layout, so there's a struct, there's a layout kind. Layout kind. Thanks so much. Oh, MSDN used to be useful. I want pack, I want struct layout. And what are my values here? So struct layout attribute, layout kind. Give me an example. Show me something. Struct layout. Layout kind of I don't need layout kind. I need layout kind of essential. So struct layout. Of course, my quick actions are do some nothing. Where is it? So it's runtime dot interrupt services. So I shouldn't have interrupts. Okay, I got interrupt services. That's well, it. It's okay. Layout kind. Sequential. Okay, version. Up, oh, and anyway, we've got the hey dude, this one may result in generation of unverified .NET IL code. So we have to use a no warn. And we will use a no warn. Dear Compiler, please quiet. I'd say please shut up, but quiet you. Love me. Get a little bit better. Quiet. Quiet you. Love me. Sometimes I personify the compiler. All I do talk about it being angry a lot. So, what does this structure look like? And go back here, we'll get our get a version. When we look at code. It's a uint8 major minor patch. Okay. So, val major uint8 val minor unit 8 val patch unit 8 so now we've got a stale version do I want to do it this way or do I do it and this is where I get confused so I gotta go let mutable version which is a stale version It has to equal something. Equal new SQL version. Alright, and then join to SQL version native dot still get version. Join to take that and then Actually, I want to do it this way. 
I want to get the version. So, version. You know, version dot. Preload version equals um, how do I print a sharp print fun uh, uint eight. Core uint eight type reason. Nope, I don't want that. What is my any basic integer type? All right, it says any basic integer type, so it should be cool. Percent i, dot percent i, dot percent i. Right, so major minor version patch. All right. Preload version. Let's not preload. Pre init. Post init. Version is that. So, and we shall see. It is mutable because we need it mutable. And so, obviously, we need to wrap it better than this because, like, I don't want to have a mutable version that I have to pass into a function. That is just so. So C. So let's see if we got what we can. What do we have? What do we can do it? And oops, the pre-init version also loads 204. So it does not require <coughs> that the other things be there. So it just always spits out 204. I thought that it did not. So in that case, well that's cool. Then that's really just SDL version. And now we have the ability to say, hey, what what version are we running? Not that it's terribly important, but it's a... <clears throat> what it does is it actually shows that our, our externs are working and calling into code and getting something out. Because nowhere in here do I have a 2.0.4. So it must be the external code. And now, of course, before before getting too far, let's add um, some code. Let's let's add. Um, see, the hard part is the naming convention. So SDL and it, or is it just SDL? I want to make the modules. Or they're called SDL with a small, no, we call it big SDL. So, the SDL itself, the SDL, mod, the SDL and NIT module is going to be called SDL. Everybody cool with that? Good. That's got to go above program. And we're going to move this stuff. Out of here and into module SDL. We're going to make this a private module so that we can only consume it from within here. We do need DLL. So we need the runtime services. This time we're going to really try to keep it organized so that. Um, we don't get into too big of a mess. It's also going. There's also going to be large lists of things put in here, and also now within my. But now within here, so that's private. I need some way of um, of initializing. So we're going to say let init equal 
we're going to do kind of a, we're going to use the convention that the F sharp um, core libraries like map and whatever you use, so SDL, it dot small init is going to initialize the thing and it's going to take, um, it's going to take the flags, which will be, we're going to explicitly put things here because I got quite tired of um, of always not having of changing of refactoring things and having things suddenly not working because of what type was being inferred by something so I'm going to give it a bit more explicit and that is an official evolution of the style of my of my of my F sharp coding style I think we'll, we'll, we'll use that as long as it's useful and so in here we're going to um, it is, well, we're going we're gonna to go, if it, if it returns zero, then we're cool. If it doesn't return zero, then we're not cool. All right. So, with the well, one thing we do, we, we call SDL init with the flag, the flags, and SDL init native. Could I could I put the just to open it? I could do that. But here it has an int so equal zero. Equal zero. That's a weird construct, isn't it? Because I could just put equal zero here. That's probably more probably more clear. Let quit, which takes a unit. It's uh, SDL init native. Well, SDL DL quit. Oh, equal. Well, let's let's make this stuff work, right? Let's also move SDL version out as well while we're at it. New item code SDL version. Can't have two files with the same module. Um, I might like to be able to do that, but I can't. I can use a namespace, but I want to use a module because it's more F sharpy. So let's bring this stuff in. Also need my need my no warn. Why is this thing? Oh, multi file. Right, SDL version needs to move up. We we'll probably need a folder for this. Still, I need runtime op services. Start layout, we're all cool. I don't actually want to. Um, export these things. The in, the internal workings of, of how this all gets done is I don't want SDL underscore version out there. I don't want these other things. Instead, what I want is type uh, so SDL version dot version equals and I want it to be a record with a Major, which is unit eight minor unit patch. And I want it more in the lines path, not patch. What is it? Unmatched, blah blah. 
how about we use a semicolon? The one time you actually have to use a semicolon in the language, and I forget to do it. This is what switching. Switching, I'll get that. So really what I want is I want a, a record, an immutable record. And what I want to do is I want to say let get version, which takes a unit, is uh, let mutable version vision equals new SDL and version. And I want to call SDL native, SDL version native, SDL get version, I'll pass my version in there, and then Now, get version spits out a completely um, now I just call SDL version dot get version here. So okay, now let's now let's make this thing work the way it ought to. Now we don't have all these things all these things are angry now. So and I don't need to, so I can say version equals SDL version dot get version build a little because it's it's been a little been a minute major minor and patch And we now just have this will just be SDL dot init. SDL dot that. Or that. SDL dot quit. Up, oh, I don't. I no longer. Uh, is there a bull? Okay, it'll be for bull. See now, it returns a bull. I was successful, or I was not. So that's kind of cool. And does it still work the same way? Yes. So that's good. And while wow, that's not all that terribly cool, that's that's a that's a significant something. That's that's a good thing. Um so going back to a Trello board. Um complete. Completed tasks. Well we're not completed. Yeah, let's not call that completed, but now um, we will change it to, I know exactly how I want to do it, and I know exactly how I want to do that, and I know exactly, oh, let's do error handling, because the, uh, it is a very, very small, okay, this one we can actually get done, there's a clear error, a get error, and a set error, there's not much to it, and, We'll pull up some codes. We're going to make a new item SDL error. Move that bad boy up. Let's go. Well, we didn't really need this. We can we can go into our error handling. And we can open these three. We got that guy. And we got that 
guy. That one should be interesting. Because now we're, we're, we're going to have to marshal. Yes, we are. Did I do setter? Oh. Oh. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. We may not. <laughs> ah. Yuck. Alright. Whew. Well, let's see what we can do. All right. Hmm. Well, I think I might have been a little over. So, module private. Right. SDL error native equals extern. I don't need that. Let's see. Extern. Extern. Yeah, okay. And we do need interrupt services. Well, we can pull this off. We'll call it a good day. And we'll put our DLL imports. And then we're going to look up some things. Because, okay, SDL clear error we're going to be able to do. But, um... So, F sharp, extern, return, um, marshalling, string, return. That another interop example. So, is there something that... No, if it's all native ints. I... Yay, yay. Well, fortunately, for us... Um, Somebody has kind of done some of this work for us in STL. STL get error. Got 23 instances. Please have. Uh, so. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. So we're going to borrow you. We're going to have a return martial ass and we'll borrowing you. We're going to put you down here. Okay, see. So that's gonna be a string. And hopefully I always hated these. Return Marshall. Ass. That was funny. Um, he's got a, a, a PUTF8 string marshaler. So, marshaling. Dot, dot, marshaling. Let's see. Marshaling char star. How do I do this? Okay, so it's char set equals that. Well, let me see. Is it a string? Try string. So, uh, really, automatic, automatically marshaled. We'll try with char set. Okay, Marshall as short path name. Okay, and we'll just try char set. Char set anti. We'll give that a shot, and we'll see. <laughs> um. Ok. 
getter. Um, do I have? I lost. I lost my. Uh, silly me. Should have left it open. Nope. I get lost when there's too many tabs. Don't mind me. Right, we're in gear and get air. We're going to the bindings. We're going to that one. Doing here, going here. We'll look for SDL. And then our list. I'll do okay. Is it UTF-8? I don't know. So, this one we can just put, we'll just try to charge it ANSI, and then, how do you put art list? Hmm. Alright. Uh, int. So string thump. Another charge that equals ANSI. Is there a... Don't know what an arg list is. It doesn't know what an arg list is. All right, uh, F sharp extern arg list. Anything. How to do this? Ah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it's going to go with no such luck. So I'll be able to set the air with a with a string, but that's what I'm going to be able to do. It looks like, at least just from anecdotal stuff here, that uh, then that really sucks. But so it goes. That's how things are. So ideally. And, and of course, I have no idea any of this works. So I want to um, I'll have to expose that, don't I? All right. So let's say let set error error string equals stl error native set error. Um, here, string. Now, what does this thing return? I'm curious here. And it return always return returns always minus one. Thanks so much. Well, that makes it easy. Get error. Well, into SDL get error. Let clear error. You know what? I just want set get. I want set. I want get. I want clear. So you can use SDL error dot set dot get dot clear. Clear it. Do a clear air. And we're going to test it. So, currently, get print fun. Set. 
chest. Going to do that. We'll do it one more time after we clear it. So it should have, I have no idea what it has at this point. Nothing, then test, and then nothing. And if we work, come on. And the result is true. Up. Uh, okay. <sighs> Let's do things in the right order. Let's read the key after we're done. Okay. So, well, project two has stopped working. Which means we did it wrong. At what point did we do it wrong, though? Where is it wrong? <laughs> Get that. Okay. Here we go. Uh, up then. Okay. Our get error is incorrect. So. Still get error. All right, then the, the guy was not necessarily doing things wrong here. So let's take a look back at your binding one more time. Here's a marshaller. We've allocated the custom marshaller. All this stuff. Ooh, now I wonder, can I take... Can I take a bite array? Can I get a bite array out of there? And we may have to do some things here. Can you see? We may have to. We may have to do some magic. And that's all right. We'll leave that. And bite array. But of course, our program is going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. We just want the one. We just want the first get. I'll get. get that, get that. Our error is going to be directive exception occurred in project two. Undollar exception of type Marshall directive exception. Maybe we do need to return. Okay. Maybe we can still do this as a string. Return Marshall as. Now I gotta look at Marshall as. Marshall as for char. Marshall as char star. Counts char star. Marshall as, Marshall as unmanaged LP stir. Marshall as unmanaged type LP stir. Let's try it. And we'll leave the char set on there. like 
Okay, so F sharp. Return marshalling. City signatures. is on the string and that's how that's how we do do return marshalling I hope this is gonna be fun all right let me start it up so there we go we do that we do this we don't do that Debugger, blah, 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 no. Well, how about, how about I call, I still <laughs> clear it, all right. It's always possible that I can't actually call this until the thing has been called clear. It's possible. So let's give, let's call SDL error clear, put a breakpoint there, we'll see, we'll see if we're just completely hosing it all up and what we're doing. Do, do you work? You work. Now the error says, nope. So, we got one other little thing here. I'm going to return an int pointer. Control plus, control plus dot. Well, system that int pointer. Because it does return a pointer to something. Let's stop trying to marshal it. Let's just deal with it as a pointer. So we set it, we clear it. Okay, so we get that. It is it is a pointer to a something. We we do indeed have a pointer to something and going to the moment leave this as a mystery. It's alright, we can't do that. for next time. I may have to do some, some research myself here. So, here's a, here it is a pointing to a thing. Alright. So I'm going to set it. Now, oh, that's blah blah blah. And this is static members. Size 8. Size 8. Really? Really? Not clear. Numbers. Oh, of course, size 8, because it's an end pointer. That's what you do. Okay, so. 
partial failure. We don't have um, we do not yet have the wait a second, I didn't do a set, did I? Oh, I did do a set. So whether or not there's there's some there's a pointer to something, the error is there. So I'm going to have to experiment with that and hopefully next time I will have figured it out. It is not my favorite place to, to sleep in and we still have to, to stop at. Uh, does not work. Or do, uh, does not give me the string yet. And what we're going to do, go over to Trello. Hello Trello, where are you at? Um, I have a to-do. Well, it's also the uncertain. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Is really this and uh, left, left to-do. Um, SDL get error. Okay, so we have SDL get error left to-do. Um, Right quick in creating this deal version, do we care about anything else? I don't think we do. So we're gonna call you Get out of my way. So we're actually going to call you at this point. Um we're going to squeeze you. Done. That we're good with. This one. We want initialization and shutdown. We want init subsystem, quit subsystem, and was init. These two don't know that I want them, but init subsystem, quit subsystem, and was init. Was not it tells me, hey, is this Give, give me, give me a, give me what was, give me what was set. And I'm going to add my checklist. So it's a two, two do's, two do's. So init sub system, quit sub system was in it. And that gives me the three things left to do there. And we're in... Now, I don't like that I'm not getting my error code. That, that I, It disappoints me and it bothers me a great deal. But, I'm going to figure it out. And thanks for Thanks for stopping. It's going to be an interesting journey, and eventually, I promise, we're going to actually have a uh, a window where we can draw some graphics. See you next time.